everyone. Uh, the, this afternoon we've released our full year results for 2022. I'm here today with our CEO, Ignacio Marirejos, and our CFO, Ernesto Lopez Mozo. Thank you, both of you, for taking the time to discuss uh, main topics. So, Ignacio, starting first question, how would you summarize this year? Hello, everyone. And, uh, we had a strong operating performance uh, last year in all our infra assets with the growth of uh, traffic uh, revenues and also EBITDA. Last year also was an important milestone in our growth path for the company. We inaugurated the I-66 before schedule. We are also uh, doing the construction of the 35 West in the north, the 3C extension, also on the schedule and hopefully will open summer this year. Also, we acquire an additional participation for the I-77, reaching 72%. We also took a, a participation of 49% in the consortium that is going to design, build and operate the new Terminal 1 at the Kennedy Airport. Also, we acquired a 60% of the Alaman Airport, an important touristic destination. We almost completed the divestment of the service division with the sale of our business unit of infra services in Spain at the beginning of the year, and also with the sale of AIM in the UK at the end of the year. A strong net cash position, we finished uh, 2022, a record of uh, backlog of uh, order book in construction and a good pipeline of uh, infra business. Yeah, very good year. Talking about business divisions, uh, it seems that COVID-19 is finally over uh, with no restrictions in place, but we've seen a different path of recovery in our different infra assets. Can you explain us main reasons for that? Well, all, all infra assets are recovering from pandemic, but they are recovering at different speeds. In the case of Toronto, is the place where we have more restrictions and for a longer period of uh, time. And what we have seen this year, because the restrictions were lifted just in, at the beginning of uh, last year, is a recovery uh, during this period of time. What we have also seen is that uh, still we have some reduction of mobility whenever we have uh, cold weather on where we have holiday season, but it's just a very short period of time. In the case of the Dallas managed lanes, uh, NT is doing very well above uh, 2019. 35 West is also doing very well above uh, 2019, even if affected by the construction at the north that I mentioned previously. LBJ is running the below 2019, but also affected by construction and also the reduction of mobility uh, around the Dallas area. I-77 and I-66 are ramping up according to expectations and all the U.S. managed lanes, the revenue per transaction is above a previous year. So it demonstrates the value that our managed lanes have in terms of time savings and also reliability. So we are happy about that. And in the case of airports, all of them are recovering well. Dalaman is uh, very close to 2019, even at the end of the year was above 2019. Hydro incredible, the performance during the year and the recovery. And AES is recovering well, but slower than the others. Ernesto inflation, interest rates, you know that we've been receiving a lot of questions during the year about the macro environment and how this is affecting our business. Could you give us some color there? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, inflation helps us a lot. I mean, the, the fact is that we have ample um, freedom to set tariffs uh, across the board uh, in our infrastructure. In, uh, in Texas, for instance, that Ignacio was mentioning before, I mean, we have a soft cap uh, that is raised uh, by inflation, six and a half uh, this year. But even so, I mean, you have also some room in different times of the day, and also sometimes you have to price above the cap because there's just uh, too much traffic. I-77, that was also mentioned, we have freedom to, to set tariffs, right? Um, also, you have Heathrow, and Heathrow, the regulated asset base is indexed to inflation, and it has helped a lot, in fact, we have less leverage now than pre-pandemic at, uh, at Heathrow, a very, a very good example, right? Um, of course, in construction, you need to manage that, and construction managed to achieve a 1% margin uh, because also it was delivering very big projects and on an accelerated basis to be able to open infrastructure, right? So very good management from construction. The other side, in our liabilities, we have um, pretty much fixed rate in, in all our debt, and also all the infrastructure has very long tenor, so there's no refinancing risk. 
uh, in terms of our net cash position, next infrastructure, the net cash also gets indexed to rates. So, I mean, euro rates were very low last year, but this year they will be higher. And the US and, uh, and Poland also have high rates. So we should benefit from, uh, from that. And also looking into the future, over time, also the 407 will be catching up with, uh, with higher rates. And in terms of cash, Ignacio was mentioning before the strong cash position that we've been achieving at the end of the year. Uh, can you explain us a little bit what drove that good performance? Yeah, well, first thing, I mean, dividends from our infrastructure and we have a portfolio that is uh, paying dividends and more will, will come from uh, um, the infrastructure that is opening um, now, right? So that was the main base for the cash uh, generation. Then construction also had a very strong performance on the back of Budimex and, uh, and also advanced payments from, uh, from some works that were contracted at the end of the year, like the Ontario line in, in Canada. Of course, we invested a lot. I mean, we are a company that is growing and is investing that subtracted some uh, uh, part of cash and also shareholder remuneration uh, was um, at pre-pandemic um, levels. So everything going uh, with the right reason. Ignacio, moving to another relevant topic for the company, sustainability. What are the main milestones that would you highlight for the year? Well, first that uh, sustainability continues to be at the core of uh, our strategy. And this year we'll open our first uh, solar plant, uh, mainly for self-consumption here in Spain. Also, we'll open a new uh, transmission line, in this case in Chile. Also, we continue improving on order book in energy solutions and water projects. Now moving to scope one and two of uh, CO2 emissions, we had uh, last year a reduction of 3.6% versus the previous year in absolute terms. Also our first uh, taxonomic uh, numbers, the rules are not yet uh, very clear how they will work, but we include as in the industry standard the managed lanes that uh, they are relevant because of the traffic flow and because of the reduction of congestion. In this case, the eligibility of revenues will be 84 percent and all the line revenues in this specific case also will be 54 percent. If we don't include the managed lanes, then the eligible revenue uh, will be close to 40 percent and the aligned uh, revenue will be 25 percent. Also, uh, last year we have a new diversity and inclusion policy adapting the previous one, a new human rights policy also updating the previous one. Also from INOR, we got the good uh, corporate governance with the first, uh, the best uh, possible ranking possible in, in this uh, specific INOR certification. And also in the sustainability index, we continue to be leading the industry and be present in the main indexes that are in the sustainability. And well, last and but not least, uh, what's next? So. Uh, what can we expect for 2023? Well, we are optimistic uh, about the year. We expect uh, to see traffic uh, growing, improving in all our infra assets that are below 2019. Also for this year, we'll see the I-66 uh, that uh, will be for the full year. We are opening uh, full in December. We'll see after summer at the same time the 3C, the extension of the 35 uh, West. We will be also presenting an offer for the SR400 a new managed lanes in Atlanta together with other two companies. Hopefully we'll continue increasing the pipeline of infra projects in the future to bid. And in terms of construction, uh, as was commented previously, our objective in 2024 is to reach 3.5% EBIT and hopefully we move in that direction during the year. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.